What's going on Jets fans? Welcome into NYJ Today. In this video, I'm going to be breaking down my top five position battles as we head into mini camps, training camp, OTAs, and preseason. I think that these are the best matchups and the most intense ones that are going to really play themselves out during the offseason and even into the regular season. Let's go ahead and get after it. Just want to thank our, again our live audience this past Wednesday. We had an absolute blast with you guys. Please, if you're a listener and you are interested in calling into these shows, we do take live call-ins to our streams every Wednesday night at 8 p.m., but we also take voicemails throughout the entire week and we play them on the live stream. So if you're interested in doing something like that, the phone number is on the screen right now. would love to hear your takes and your thoughts on the New York Jets as we go through the offseason. My first position battle is between the two running backs, Michael Carter out of UNC, who we just drafted in the fourth round, versus Ty Johnson, a running back that we had last year who played quite well, actually. And I think that most Jets fans right now are sleeping on the fact that this guy's going to have a role, especially early on in the season, and may even be the starter. And that's kind of why I feel like this could be a really interesting battle as we go and get closer to the regular season. So Ty Johnson had a 22 rush 100 plus yard game versus the Las Vegas Raiders and then also had a six reception game versus the LA Rams. So he possesses really good well-rounded skill set. He's able to run the ball between the tackles. We saw that versus the Raiders. He also has some really deceptive speed and good hands as well. You saw that on display as well in some other games. I really like Ty Johnson and again I think that he has a place on this team and he has a role in this offense. So I'm really looking forward to him and Michael Carter. And then, of course, Michael Carter is somebody that we're all really excited about just because he has so much potential coming right out of the draft. He's extremely elusive, and I think that he just brings a special pop to this offense. He's got a great set of hands. Again, they're very similar in that regard is that they're very well-rounded. And again, this is going to be a really juicy matchup. I can't wait to see these two go at it. And again, what kind of running back committee are we going to have going into 2021? Is it going to be where these guys are splitting carries? Is it going to be a third guy involved? Is LaMichael P. Ryan going to get involved? Josh Adams, Tevin Coleman. I think one of these guys and maybe even two of these guys will end up getting cut. So it's going to be very interesting to see if LaMichael P. Ryan can stick and can get involved in the offensive game plan. I think these are the two guys that you should be paying most attention to. And again, just can't wait to see these guys go at it and make big, big plays for the Jets in 2021. My second position battle is between wide receivers, Jamison Crowder and Elijah Moore, who we just selected at the 34th overall pick in the 2021 NFL Draft. So I'm going to start off by just saying I do not believe that we should be moving on from Jamison Crowder. We should not be cutting him. We should not be trading him. He should stay on the roster for this season, even though his contract is up at the end of the year. Jamison Crowder offers way too much security and depth and veteran leadership on this team. And I think that with a quarterback that we just drafted at the second overall pick in Zach Wilson, it would be foolish to trade away somebody with so much experience, so much ability in the slot and depth. We need all five of these guys. We have Denzel Mims. We have Corey Davis. We have Elijah Moore. We have Jamison Crowder. And we have Keelan Cole, who we signed in free agency as well. All five are going to make the team, and I believe that they need to continue to involve Jamison Crowder and obviously Elijah Moore into the offense. So why is this a position battle? Well, I think that these guys are going to be fighting for reps inside the slot. I think that this is going to be such great competition, and it's not really one of those things where one person wins and then the other guy never plays. They're both going to get playing time, and they're both going to get a lot of uh, opportunities to make big plays in this offense. It's more or less uh, an idea of, you know, who's going to be getting the majority of the snaps and who's going to be playing more. The one thing I will bring out, though, is, is just that Elijah Moore offers a little bit more versatility than Jamison Crowder does. Elijah Moore has lined up as a running back in college football. He can play on the outside. He has enough speed and ability to do that. And I think Jamison Crowder is a little bit limited in his a variety of, of what he can do on the offensive side. So I think moving forward, we can all safely assume that Elijah Moore will take the job and will earn the job, if not by the end of this season, certainly going into the 2022 season. And I just really look forward to seeing these two guys really duke it out. How, how will Jamison Crowder react to the Jets investing in Elijah Moore? Is he going to come out and just completely work his butt off 
and try to make sure that he doesn't lose his job? Or is Elijah Moore going to step up? Is he going to make big time plays when he's given opportunities and just take the job away, essentially? I'm looking forward to this competition. This is going to be a really, really good one moving into the season and throughout the year. I'm really excited to see what they can do. My third position battle is going to be between safeties, LaMarcus Joyner and Ashton Davis. I think a lot of people are just assuming that Ashton Davis is going to be a starter week one and that LaMarcus Joyner was signed to just kind of be the backup. And that could end up playing out. But I actually give LaMarcus Joyner a decent shot at the starting job, especially early on in the season. And again, these guys are going to be rotating. They're going to be playing all three of them, Marcus May, LaMarcus Joyner, and Ashton Davis. But the point here is, is which one's going to play the most? Who's going to be playing on those base packages when there are two safeties on the field? And it would not surprise me at all if LaMarcus Joyner was out there on the majority of these uh, snaps. And so the question becomes, is the second year player, the fourth round pick, excuse me, third round pick, Ashton Davis out of Cal, is he going to step up and is he going to take someone's job that could potentially be theirs at the beginning of the year? And I think that it's going to be interesting to see how Ashton Davis responds to this challenge, to this veteran who is competing with him. He didn't really have that situation last year. At least he didn't have anybody as accomplished as LaMarcus going into the year. And so I'm going to be really interested and really paying close attention to Ashton and seeing, you know, what does he look like compared to his rookie year to now this year? Does he take a next step? Does he show a little bit, uh, you know, better pursuit angles when he's, when he's in the secondary? Is he going to take better angles at these receivers to make sure that he can make plays on the ball or at least to be in position to make tackles. We saw him out of position quite a bit in the secondary, and so I'm very interested to see what happens here between these two. It would not surprise me in the least if LaMarcus Joyner was the week one starter opposite Marcus May. So we'll keep our eyes on this, and again, I think it's going to be really cool to watch and see can the young gun take over for the old vet. My fourth position battle to be paying close attention to heading into the 2021 offseason is between tight ends Chris Herndon and, yes, undrafted free agent Kenny Yaboa out of Ole Miss. This is the former and current teammate of Elijah Moore. And this guy can ball. He's a pretty good player. And, again, this guy was undrafted. And if you look at the current roster, who's taking Kenny Yaboa's job? Who's taking his roster spot right now? We have Tyler Croft. We have Chris Herndon. We have Kenny Yaboa, and we also have Ryan Griffin, who is, I think, personally, a very, very likely cut candidate as we go through the offseason. I don't see him potentially keeping his job. So I give Kenny Yaboa, unless we trade for somebody, a really good shot of making the 53-man roster and actually playing a decent amount of football this coming season. So if he's playing... We all know that Chris Herndon needs a push and he needs some competition. So I actually love the two of these going at it during the offseason. I would love to see Kenny Yaboa really push and really make Chris Herndon's seat get a little bit warmer. He needs that. Chris Herndon needs that. Kenny Yaboa needs that. And the Jets need that. We need tight ends to perform and to produce in this offense. And I would love it in in a perfect world. I would love it if they both turned into really decent tight end two type of players. And there's no reason why they can't make it happen. We've seen Chris Herndon do it in his rookie year. He he performed very, very nicely. His problem was is that he got hurt year two, had the suspension as well. And then this past year, he just absolutely tanked. He had too many drops, fumble problems, and really he was just getting in his own head. And I think that if he can shake that off with this new coaching staff, I think he's going to have a really successful year this year. And again, you can't underestimate the fact that even though he's undrafted, I think that Kenny Yaboa offers a lot to this football team, especially this coming season. I think that competition is worth mentioning, and I think it's worth noting. I think it's going to be a very juicy one. I think that it's something that we should pay attention to during the preseason. Hopefully we get some preseason games. I would love to see these guys playing, and I'm going to be paying close attention to what happens at the tight end spot. My fifth and final position battle is between the guards, Cameron Clark, and the veteran, Greg Van Roten. Now, I think that we all know that Greg Van Roten is the below-average veteran starter right now on this offensive line. We really can't expect much out of him other than just to not really screw things up completely on the offensive line. 
But even saying that, I'm not real confident with him as our starter at that right guard spot. The ideal situation is that Cameron Clark, the fourth round pick in the 2020 draft out of Charlotte, is that he's been working his butt off this offseason and even during last season where he didn't even play a single game. My hope is, is that Cameron Clark is ready to take this job from Greg Van Roden. And if he's able to, think about our offensive line. Think about how talented and how young it would be. Makai Becton, Elijah Veritucker on the left side, two top 15 draft picks. We'd have Connor McGovern with tons of starting experience at the center and even the guard spots. And then we would have Cameron Clark on the right guard spot and George Fant on that right tackle spot. I think that would be a really, really solid offensive line. Probably one of the best that we've had in a really, really long time. And I think that our offense could seriously take a big time step forward if Cameron Clark is able to take the job and give us average guard play at that right guard spot. So I'm very interested to see this battle. I'm very interested to see if Cameron Clark can live up to that mid-round draft pick that we used on him. Fingers crossed, Jets fans, that he is able to take that step. That's going to do it for this video. Thank you so much for watching NYJ Today. Guys, if you could do me a favor and jet up the like button on this video, and if you're new here and you've enjoyed the content, please consider subscribing to the channel. Let me know what you guys think in the comments. What are some of the position battles that you guys are interested in? And then of the ones that I mentioned, you know, who do you, what do you guys see happening with these position battles? Who do you think comes out on top? I would love to hear you guys what you think in the comments. Thank you so much for watching. Go Jets. See you guys next time.